Before this episode of Revenge of the Sequel, uh, we just wanted to spend some time and pay some tribute to the great George A. Romero, who died at the age of 77. Um, he started off uh, in his early years directing one of the best, uh, I guess, small budget independent films of all time, Night of the Living Dead, and starting the zombie craze. Um, you guys love George Romero, right? Um, yeah, he's actually one of the big inspirations. I always said that sh- uh, movies like Shaun of the Dead got me into into movies it- itself. But And then I slowly realized that while watching Shaun of the Dead, I was able to point out all these references to George A. Romero's movies because of, um, I guess, what he used to be, I guess, the, the first one, the first person to go off and make their own independent movie that you didn't have to have a big Hollywood studio backing you. And without him, there wouldn't be things like The Walking Dead and Resident Evil around. And even st- stuff like Shaun of the Dead, he, he's, he not only impacted that whole zombie genre and craze, Obviously, but he also, I think it, the roots run deeper in, in just filmmaking in general. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm a huge George A. Romero fan. Um, he's, um, he's a pioneer, like the way Andrew was describing. Um, he's the whole reason I'm into movies. You know, Dawn of the Dead had a huge effect on my life when I first saw it, like, you know, back in, you know, freshman year or something. Great movie. Um, everything after that, everything I've seen from Romero is just uh, awesome. Um, he's had like some of the great, uh, even some underrated gems like the crazies and, you know, Martin, which are like great movies in Creep itself. Show. Yeah. Creep show. Um, yeah, man, it's, it's crazy. Like, you know, b- us being as filmmakers too, he kind of showed us all how it was done. You know, just, you don't have to wait for money. You don't have to do wait for anybody else. Just go and grab your friends, just shoot it and just do it. And so um, the world, you know, the world lost a great man and we're all zombies walk a little slower because of it. In other words. Yeah. Um, and, we actually, our, our first episode of the podcast was... Yeah, he's got a history with this was podcast. Day of the Dead, yeah. Day of the Dead. Yeah. Ken Foray was on our podcast. Yeah, for yeah, Dawn our, of the Dead. For yeah. Dawn of the Dead podcast. Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. So we definitely, um, even this podcast was influenced by him, but mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. I remember when we made that zombie movie, that zombie short film, we were looking for a reason for people to stick. We, we made this film festival called Zom Bon Zom, which was yeah, like yeah. a zombie <laughs> film festival. Yeah. yeah. And then we thought, well, let's... Let's get people to to do makeup so people look like zombies and do the whole thing. But our short film was like six minutes long. Right. So yeah. we needed a reason for them to stick around for the whole night. And we had a screening of Night of the, of yeah. the Living Dead. Yeah. Partially because there was no uh, <laughs> copyright, have to any on it, copyright yeah. for anything. But and it worked out. Really a lot of people stayed to watch and that they movie. Were, yeah, they were really they were having a good time and stuff like that. And even just then, like people who haven't seen that movie, it's just it still has them in awe. And yeah, it's just pretty sad. And, you know. Yeah. Just a, we just wanted to wish here at uh, the ROTS, we wanted to wish a fond farewell to him. Yeah, probably get another episode of another oh, for sure. zombie yeah, was, yeah. Yeah. film coming awesome, soon. Guys. Maybe Creepshow 2. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tarantino, when he was giving Romero an Oscar, George A. Romero an Oscar, he said that the A in Oscar. George A. Romero... Oh, sorry. An, like award. an, an award, yeah. 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 <laughs> he said uh, uh, the A in George A. Romero stood for a fucking genius. Yeah. That's and true. we definitely agree. Mm-hmm. There. How could there have been only one? And he's back in business. Is the worst idea in the history of bad ideas. Part two is the final chapter in the violent history of. This time, it's personal. Help the humans about to escape. Get your paws off me, you dirty ape! <gasps> he can talk. He can talk, 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 he can talk. I can sing. Ooh, help me, Dr. Sayus. Dr. Sayus, Dr. Sayus. Dr. Sayus, Dr. Sayus. Dr. Sayus, Dr. Sayus. Oh, Dr. Sayus. Nice. 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 It just cuts off there. <laughs> it is. It's a hard stop for <laughs> yeah. Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas, one of the characters in the famed franchise, Planet of the Apes, the uh, the originals, <coughs> the OGs. <coughs> and in Tim Burton's remake, boom. Welcome to Revenge of the Sequel, the podcast about sequels. My name is Emmanuel. My name is Emmanuel Delphin also. My name is John. It's the only uh, different name here, apparently. We I literally are... changed my name. You know, Andrew, no one ever knows w- what your name is. Yeah, I know, for real. What's it's a real like, gag that, on this? That, yeah, it's the, uh, what's the man without a name? Uh, this is a Western thing, right? Yeah. Is that, is that a Western thing? Yeah, yeah I guess Western so. Thing, right? Ouch. Why do, you not, why do you not want people to know who you are? 
Are you um, embarrassed of us? Mm-hmm. Uh, tax fraud. Wait. <laughs> uh, no, no. Identity th- theft. There we go. I don't get that first one, but it was, yeah. it was funnier than the second yeah. response. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, identity theft, I'm sure, leads to tax fraud. Uh, <laughs> just one of the many things that you can call the police. Wesley Snipes. Call the police right now, and, and Andrew's probably, you can, you can get him arrested. Yeah, if my name is Andrew, for all you know. Um, but, uh, the, uh, thank you guys so much for joining us for another episode. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast. You can't like a podcast. Subscribe to it and review it. Ooh. That's how new people find us. You can like us. Yeah. They, 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 want. they better like us. We also got cameras rolling, so be sure to check out these videos, these sick check videos. Check out these sweet vids. I'm pointing to the camera right now so you can sync this up while you're listening if this and ru- watching. If this ruins your illusion of us, yeah. if you're like, man, I, I imagine three hot yeah yeah i know for real. I'm sorry. shirtless guys yeah oh man. Who are, you shirtless know. Well, we're not guys? wearing pants you can't see uh, on the video where you can't see anything from yeah. the waist down and maybe. instead you get like three nerds literally all of us wear glasses 24 <laughs> 7 uh yeah you're e- right. even before they were cool we were man, wearing glasses. It's just like this is a downer of an episode already and you what you oh know what God. else Half just of beat, us beating me down <laughs> we we don't know anything about <laughs> girls <laughs> Um, welcome <laughs> back to the episode. Um, so this week we're talking about war. We're talking about the planet <coughs> and we're talking about apes. Apes. Yeah. That's right. Hashtag apes together strong. We're talking about war for the planet of the apes. Is that a political? Um, uh, it is yeah. now. Yeah. We're talking about Jane war Goodall. of the planet of the apes. And let me <laughs> read to you. The synopsis is very quick. After the apes suffer unimaginable losses, Caesar wrestles with his darker instincts and begins his own mythic quest to avenge his kind. Does it say mythic? That's the worst. Yeah, his own mythic quest. Who wrote that? Um, some guy on IMDb. Uh, Tell him to come write reviews for us. Yeah, Boom. Don't perfect. forget. <laughs> uh, so if you guys hadn't known, we have a website, revengeofthesequel.com, where we've already reviewed this movie. At least I have. A spoiler-free version, though. A spoiler-free version. And uh, we're going to have a little bit of that right now. Yeah. What did you guys think? Uh, this is all spoiler-free, so don't get your <laughs> panties in a wad. Yeah. Uh, Boom. Get. Uh, so what What were your review? What are, what, what's your, uh, what's <clears throat> your opinion of War of the Planet of the Days? I know, John, you just watched it. Today, yeah, it's my first time watching that today. So fresh from the movie, what do you think of it? I don't know. No, I'm just playing. Okay, uh, all right, let's go to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, it's a great movie. It's a had a little bit more emotional beats than I thought it was going to have. At least for a third part in a trilogy, you don't really get like third movies that are really all that. You know, not to say that they're not great because you know the third movies are pretty. Like you know, Dark Knight Rises, Godfather Re- Three, Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith, yeah. uh, Return of the Jedi, Godfather you know, the, three. all these movies, Godfather Three, um, you know, they're, they don't really live up to whatever came in the f- second one, or at least Resident even in the Evil first one. Three. It God se- damn it! A lot of threes in uh, since we're about end sequels. up dropping the yeah, dropping the ball. Spider yeah. Man Three, and I think a part of it is because they have to re- they have to resolve everything, and you kind of know it. And you're like, oh, there's the third one. They're gonna tie up all the ends. And there's just something not really satisfying about that. Alien 3. Yeah, or it's maybe just not tied up in the way that you kind of like, you John, know. you're just like, yeah, or like they it. suck. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, shit. Anyway, point is, um, this n- third movie was really, really good. Uh, without, you know, obviously we'll get into spoilers and stuff, but man, it just surprises you at every turn. Uh, the things that you think are going to happen don't. And I don't know, it was just, it's a very, it's a very good time, very, uh, very emotional movie. You, I wouldn't be surprised if you know someone was shedding a tear at the end. Yeah, of flick. I was so, definitely, definitely. You know, shit. Andrew, um, so I, I guess um, you've seen oh, yeah. it before, right? You've seen it. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm a two timer. I'm two-timer. a two timer. Okay. Um, you hear yeah. that, ladies? Yeah, I'll two time you. Watch out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. With a monkey. Don't, don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so I saw this movie, and like John said, usually trilogies um, they degrade as they go on. The first one is good. The second one's less better than the first one. And the third one, uh, you know, same thing. But um, this trilogy was kind of refreshing because it was almost the opposite way. And I almost wasn't going to watch this. But and then I realized that Matt Reeves was doing the next uh, Batman movie. And so you're I, like, man, and that, I got to gonna gotta his, see. It, that's going to be his next movie, you know. So I kind of wanted to see on, I guess, how, what he what he was made out of in yeah. this one, you know. And this one really said a lot about him him being able to carry a franchise three movies long. I hope he doesn't do any more so that it, it doesn't tarnish it and that it's not just trying to cash cow it, you know. 
but um yeah it was really good and um i think this one is definitely the funnest for all the um people growing up who grew up with the original movies yeah um it's got a lot of references and things like that but um we'll get into it later I mean, without spoilers. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get into of, it yeah, later, you dirty yeah. dingus. Well, so the so spoiler free zone ends not yet. Nah. I yeah. love this movie. Yeah, we're, okay. yeah. <laughs> God, you, you, you care like, what I have to yeah, say. Just, huh? You just wrote just a like review. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I agree with you. So emotional. And I think everything that we're talking about is insane because these are apes. <laughs> these are completely <laughs> CGI animals. Yeah, and I did th- say that to John watching this the second time was this trilogy is one of the most human stories not regarding humans ever you know yeah almost you know they're, they're very much secondary like characters. outside of yeah. like a disney like yeah. animated flick yeah. which has like human it's, it's, like you know it's hum- human definitely characters about other... um, humanity yeah you know? yeah and i think what's really cool about this movie or really this franchise in whole one of the best reboots i think ever, ever. yeah um, probably the like with this tri- like this installment makes it oh, probably yeah. ever yeah ultimate but it's almost even if you look at everything as a whole you were, you were talking about how human this movie is, but it did not start that way. Caesar started as an ape. Bright eyes. And he got bright eyes. Mm. He acquired mm. kind of all of these leadership skills and all these emotional um, responses and all of the confusing you know, changes to kind of his place in the world throughout these three movies. And I think what we see is him ultimately becoming just about as human as you can possibly be yeah, yeah. almost trying movie. to be better than than the humans what yeah. they've become you oh know? yeah it's like uh apes are going this way which this is an audio podcast you don't see it's yeah going but up. on the video, video you can see it oh my god it's like, like the, we all turn to the camera and we're all looking at it right now it's like the apes evolution is going this way and the human evolution is going which th- way is downwards going? downwards this and way. we see that over three movies but it all comes to this and it's um yeah it's just insane and it's it's kind of an, a disaster movie oh yeah it, and it's it's very uh, apocalyptic and war it's war-like. a heavy war apocalyptic disaster movie but it's not in the way that like a ton of movies are where you know there's a red phone at the white house and someone says hey the apes are attacking yeah. which is i think the way that most producers think blockbuster movies need to be like this geostorm movie or you know, the day after tomorrow, Sharknado five, Sharknado five. These are movies that are, you know, disaster movies. And if it's happening around the world, they think, oh, you want to see like the scope of it. Right. But in re- we did <clears throat> this movie did the opposite and it went about as personal as it possibly could be, even to the point where it's like a Clint Eastwood Western. Yeah, for I revenge. know. I, yeah, I yeah. got that feeling. too. But you sure. also got kind of with the with the with the main bad guy. Played by Woody Harrelson, the Colonel. The Colonel, yeah. And with yeah. Caesar, they kind of took on the roles of humanity and apes for the world, you know. And and it's kind of really cool to see that because that's really rare. Because if you're thinking about a movie where apes are taking over and it's called War of the Planet of the Apes, you're expecting like ten battle sequences, yeah, all you, out, just yeah. And you really didn't, but yeah. it was fine. Like, like it was Lord of the Rings, really sad. yeah. Apes versus. That's, but yeah, that's a lot of a lot of that you got in the second movie. So I think I wanted to know. Especially with a title like War for the Planet of the Apes, I wanted to know how exactly they were going to do that yeah. without being repetitive and, and it's, boring. It's really um, complex, which I really appreciate, just as like one of these guys who tries to figure movies out, like you guys probably going in. Yeah, yeah. And it, um, it's really interesting reading the inspiration for this movie. Um, of all sequels, what, just without, just thinking out loud, what do you think was one of the main inspirations for this movie? Think about the setting and how dark it is. I was just reading this. Fuck. I oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> Andrew? No, say it. Go ahead. No, I, I, I didn't read a sequel, but I heard Think the Bridge on the River Kauai. Bridge on the River Kauai, definitely. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Even freaking Pootie Star Tang Wars. Two. Empire Strikes um, Back. Empire Strikes Back as well. Like, they're, just, they're fighting in snow, which is yeah. like a yeah. classic. That was refreshing, thing. too. Like, I, I, I appreciate the, the efforts of trying to make this one very different from the other yeah. two. Um, but, uh, yeah, I thought, the, I, I thought it was crazy that, again, like, it just blew my mind that yeah. it, it was this good. It's not supposed to be this good. It's supposed to suck or whatever. Yeah, you know? and man, statistically geez. speaking. So, whatever. how do you guys feel about Matt Reeves making the new Superman, Batman, but <laughs> making the new uh, Superman of Gotham movies, uh, yeah. Batman, <laughs> Superman of Night? Like, oh. does this movie instill like some uh, confidence? Because it appears like he just tr- trashed the old, old script, right? Yeah, yeah. He trashed it all from the beginning. I am all for Matt Reeves so doing we, whatever so he does. Uh, I've been a fan of Matt Reeves since Cloverfield. I've been a fan of him since uh, Felicity. Yeah, he's directed. I'm just some, kidding. Uh, yeah. Well, he is part of the the old Whedon gang. J.J. Abrams, you know, J. J. Abrams, Abrams crew. Gang, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, my bad. But J.J. Abrams. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I've been a fan of uh, Cloverfield. I like Let Me In. 
a uh, great remake of Let the Right One In. I liked uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Man, and and this one's great, too. And how similar is Cloverfield in scope to this movie? Like, it's a movie about this epic, crazy thing happening, but you see it in the eyes of, like, of like just like two yeah. people. Through two or three people. Yeah, and it's so great. And so I feel like that he'll bring that to a Batman mu- movie. He like, yeah. might make it very human. And I hope he does a trilogy of Batman movies if he, he keeps making movies like this. Dang. Yeah. He's a talented dude. So, like, I'm, I'm all on board. I, I was yeah. a huge Matt Reeves fan before this flick, so. Yeah. What about, um, I talked about the re- in the review about Matt Reeves and also Andy Serkis. What do you guys think about Andy Serkis? Because he's the voice of Caesar, and right? He, Isn't he, he, he does yeah. everything. He he's does Caesar, the mocap. Right? Yeah, he, he does. He acts it out. And this um, is the most I think he's been on screen. I, yeah, for sure. And like I ever. think for sure he at least deserves an Oscar nomination after these three. Like, and or at it, least it, an it, honorary it, Oscar. Yeah, like, exactly, you know, eventually it, it in does life. extend yeah. out into into other things. Like he does. Obviously, he did Smeagol and stuff, and he wasn't considered for that. And he uh, is he Snoke? He's Snoke, right? He's Snoke. Yeah. Yeah. So just things like that, where uh, you know, so give the guy, throw the guy a bone, something. You know? Yeah. I mean, Andy Serkis is especially in these movies has changed the way Master like how craft. you view CGI characters. Oh yeah, like, definitely. You know, like if you do well, good mocap, and uh, again, and also good acting and stuff like that, and just that combination of man, yeah. this movie is just kind of weird though, because you. On the technical level, you still have to have people like you know animating those yeah. face expressions yeah. to match what the actors are yeah. doing. And but it's you, just but you can I think you can tell that those were his. He was doing that with his face. Oh, you, yeah, right? definitely. Like, yeah, it, it's it's odd because we're talking about how human this movie is, and and if you go like behind the scenes, think about how they made it. It probably is because there's a human playing right. the monkey or the ape that they All animate. The apes, yeah. You know, which is is, is just insane. But yeah, I, I loved Andy Circus too, and I think the the fact that um, He's he's not at like the superstardom level, but if if you replace Caesar in this movie with like Brad Pitt or something like that, you'd be like, man, this guy acted his butt off for yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly three movies straight, and and now here we are at the end, and it's still really now really he's good. in Star Wars, and now he's in uh, Lord of the Rings, and now he's yeah. in uh, God. I uh, hope they pay him he's the same in amount. He's yeah. in Black Panther, you know, as Claw. So. Oh wow, yeah, but yeah, so I, I, it's gonna be really really. Um, fantastic, but cool. So that is the end of our, of our spoiler-free we done. review. That was a 17-minute review. Yeah. So I'm gonna go over so and turn off the cameras. 17 minutes and 13 seconds is where you want to stop. And then we're gonna enter the spoiler zone. You guys have Ooh. a sound effect. Oh, uh, yeah. Andrew, John, like sing, sing the spoiler zone theme song. We spoiler free. Now we know. Highway to the spoiler zone. Okay, all right, that's enough. Um, that song was written by, oddly enough, Hans Zimmer. Hans Thank Zimmer. I, we appreciate it. And and, uh, uh, his, <laughs> his contribution was just Thank very... Thank you. Yeah, he was, was a huge, very generous. He's the huge fan of the show, and he, really wa- he wanted to come on, but we were like, listen, no one really wants to hear from Hans you. Zimmer. And yeah. he's like, I just want to be a part of it. So he said, you know what? Write us, a, write us something. We'll play it. So that was for you, Hans. Yeah. Yeah. He wrote yeah. it when he was uh, super messed up, he said. Yeah. He um, might have stolen a couple of things. Yeah. yeah. He was from the, from the, the age of two. Yeah. Leave us alone, okay? Leave us alone, Hans Zimmer. I'm just kidding. Open invite. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's go into the spoiler-free review of War of the Planet of the Apes. The first thing I want to talk about. Wait, spoiler-free or spoiler? Spoiler full. Sorry. Spoiler full, man. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going one. deep. People hung, people hung up. They're not, <laughs> yeah. they're not calling the show. <laughs> yeah. People turn it off right yeah. quick. Um, but Caesar, let's talk about Caesar. What of his journey... He is the guy, right? He's the main He's character. not a guy. He's well, definitely not a guy. He's the sure. ape for the last three movies. How do you think his journey was from the very beginning to where, well, it all ends because he dies? First spoiler. Yeah, ding, boom. ding, ding, ding. No. Boom. The ending of the movie. Here we go. What What do you think Hope of Caesar? Like off. Just from being literally a test ape to like being the leader of a new... Yeah. I think, it's, I think it's pretty fucking great, especially if you. I haven't watched these movies back to back. I haven't even seen Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Man, in, that in would a few be years. insane to watch these. Yeah, movies exactly. Back-to-back. Like, it would be an amazing, like you know, character arc to experience, like just seeing. Because especially because Caesar is very like you know, like um, he learned it from James Franco. <laughs> yeah. Well, right? yeah. Well, even like in that first movie, he's very different from yeah. even visually, like the yeah. way the effects have like Hurricane evolved yeah. was over. over like the movies. But like, but it's it's important too because James Franco is he what is ins- very humble ape. Yeah, yeah. Because James Franco took care of him, it's what gives him that humanity, that hint of humanity, and that hint of like uh, mercy. Because yeah. uh, they talk about Koba a lot in this movie, 
But Koba is an ape who had the opposite experience with humans. Koba Commander? Koba Commander. <laughs> Cobra Commander, yeah. <laughs> um, and so Koba <laughs> wants to kill them all. And he's still dealing with that in this movie, but it's he was as abused though... abused and stuff. It, yeah. It, it's like the mirror or whatever, the, the thing that Caesar could have been. It's, you know? it's like when Luke goes and sees Darth Vader oh, yeah, at, in uh, Dagobah. The, yeah, but I was gonna go to Toski Station. Some so I, I think this is like it's insane that the, his humanity is what makes him better than humans. Like his time with James Franco, <laughs> I don't know what we're saying his name yeah. instead of it's his, all right. his and time that, with and James John, Franco, John Lithgow, and John Lithgow. Yeah. Like his time with those Who's two John actors, no, um, Third Rock and oh, Sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, his his time with Daddy's his, home too. Uh, Go yeah. see John Lithgow. Wow, we we talked Versus about his no beginning. Gibson. And his most current movie, <laughs> nothing in between happened. Yeah. Um, but we, Twilight's but, a, oh shit. His time, but oh boy, his time between the damn, I can't finish. The, his time between That's what she said. his time with those guys <laughs> are what informs his decision in this movie. Yeah. Ultimately, even not to kill the colonel. Yeah, like, at the very end, just yeah. those to let the, the the those hostage guys go. Yeah, like it's insane how you understand if you watch them all and you just kind of understand why he acts the way he is even though humans give him every reason to be just like Koba like every reason yeah, one of the definitely. biggest inciting incidents in the movie is um, his family gets murdered and you think like uh, such a powerful like such a crazy scene too oh like, my gosh yeah and I, th- I, that's the, something I did appreciate from this movie too was that the trailer murder were cut um, yeah the, mur- the, the <laughs> killing of his w- wife and child um <laughs> Anyway, um, oh, the trailers made it seem like this is going to be like the climax of the movie. Like, oh, he's going to fist fight Woody Just a Harrelson, war, right? You know? Yeah. And it was almost like a, a mirror to that Koba scene. Remember when they're fighting on the chain mm. a little bit there? But um, yeah. So I saw the trailer and I was like, oh, for sure, that's the ending. But and then they give this scene to us like in that's the first just 10 minutes. the beginning. And it's it's all sorts yeah. of like crazy because it, it builds such an anticipation. It's a, yeah. I love how quiet this movie is, but it builds such this yeah. like epic build up like at the beginning. With where the it, score too. Yeah, yeah. it kind of shows you like the, the montage. It's like it rise and dawn and, you know, oh, yeah. war and all that. And then it shows the soldiers there and they're all completely quiet. But you know that they're there for a reason. Yeah, you know? it's, it's a almost like a firing squad but anyway um yeah it's the same thing with that scene where they they murder his wife and kids um his kid yeah and so the apes are constantly being attacked by this group of soldiers and it does open with an insane like action-packed what looks like massacre yeah until a, at first it, it starts yeah. like a, like and a then war then movie and yeah then, like and you you expect that this is the movie like this is you know, uh, two hours of this, yeah, like yeah. this kind of stuff, and then it reverses. It pulls yeah. the rug out from under you, and like you know, but you feel that's what I was telling Drew. It was like you know, it's really crazy. You they have that shot, especially because they have that incredible like, shot that's overhead. It's an overhead shot that pans like from like you know, it's a wide shot. It's looking down at like you know the carnage. All the basically a bunch shooting. of soldiers shooting at like you know an unarmed apes. Yeah, some apes have like you know some guns and stuff, but they're not really putting up much of a fight. Yeah, and then you get all the apes coming back, you know, uh, on horseback and stuff. And uh, man, and then it's just reversed, and you're like, "Whoa!" Like yeah. I would not want to be any one of those guys. Like I right now, ex- it looked awesome. For some reason, I had the expectation that Caesar's son was going to be throughout the movie and be the like, you yeah. know, the hero. Right. And Even Judy Greer as his wife, yeah, they had to kill her off real quick. But very quickly, they are Peace the inciting incident. And in I, we can talk about a lot of what this movie reminds us of. But this movie reminds me, and I, I say it, I said it with Logan too, of a western. Where it's like something that drives him to the edge and all bets are off because this guy's out for revenge. And it's even small time, too, yeah. where he takes like a group of like a posse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where he it, rounds up only, a posse. Yeah, it's him, Maurice, they, Luca. They and, meet a girl uh, Rocket. Um, in the movie. The Searchers, they meet a girl who is like raised by Native Americans. So she can't talk the whole time. And I was like, man, this is the same thing. Isn't this the summer of like uh uh like <laughs> like little girl characters who are strong but like are quiet think of like stranger things and logan and this movie like it's just something that we're i don't know if i'm just noticing it more yeah. but are you saying this is the summer of the silent small girl feel <laughs> like strong female character oh, yeah. Yeah. Mute. seriously and even in transformers she wasn't a doctor silent who, but there was like you know doctor the, yeah 13 <laughs> doctors a woman now Jeez, what? hillary it. clinton was close <laughs> um but yeah, holy shit but this is these are like kind of it reminds me of like the best filmmakers now are almost going back to basics of filmmaking where it's not heavy dialogue 
It's a lot of um, you very. Be, you need to be able to portray these things without saying yeah. things. Almost, it's bare yeah. bone stuff. It's just like yeah. it's the. Uh, it's more emotion- visual than. Yeah. It's the visual, like, you know, representation of an emotional connection yeah. between, like, you know, two people yeah. or two, I guess in this case, you Species. know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and just. It's, and it's like whenever you don't talk for an hour, then the, the first thing you say is just that much more important. Mm-hmm. Or it's like watching a silent movie where when you see something in the corner, you're just drawn to it more because there isn't some guy narrating the whole time saying, you know, oh, there's something in the corner. Yeah, and it's, they do that all the good. time with Maurice it, throughout this trilogy where in the oh. last one, like, you know, he didn't talk in the, the yeah. second one. Yeah. He didn't talk until the war broke out and yeah. he said run, you know, and yeah. you're like, oh, snap. You know, he Maurice can talk, yeah. yeah, let's go. God. And it's the same thing in this movie where he, it's like the gut punch where the, the little girl's asking like, hey, am I an ape? Yeah. He's like, no, you're, and then he speaks yeah. the word oh. Nova. You know, yeah, and which is it? Yeah. Yeah. Maurice, which is awesome because it's from the first Planet of the Apes, and that girl's name yeah. is Nova. Maurice Shout- is like my fucking favorite. Yeah, the bare necessities. Oh, it's I, yeah, I want to be like guess, you. Yeah. yeah, like it's the same thing. It's uh, that's not what. That's yeah. King Louis. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's right. an orangutan. <laughs> you said the bare necessities. Yeah, I know. And then I started singing. <laughs> I want to be like. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess that's what just makes this movie so like these movies so weird and captivating because like. I don't know. We we talked about it earlier, but like you know, a movie star, uh, an actress, like you know, captivates you, or an actor basically captivates you with their face, with their eyes, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these, like you know, these apes are doing it all like with the same thing. This, like, you yeah, know, I know the it's exact like, same thing. Yeah. But you're just like, wow. Like, but it's like the character because I, I know it sounds stupid, but now when you go watch a movie with Matt Damon or with Mark Wahlberg in it, in the back of your head, you're like, this is Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, it's in too big. It's too famous. Yeah, because they're like you know, you and because can't you know, it brings it. box office, and that's why the movies where people are like, "Oh, that's crazy," are like you know, Guardians, where no one really knew unless you watch Parks and Rec who Chris Pratt was. Right. So you're like, man, this guy has a good acting, but then you were like marrying it with a character. Right. In this movie, it's all character. Yeah, Like exactly. you're just like, this all is yeah, Caesar. Yeah. I don't know who's playing him or whatever. Yeah. yeah but this guy really is know. Yeah. like. This this guy I'm on board with. Exactly. I sympathize. And almost every review that I've read, and I agree completely, is, man, you care so much for the apes, and you side with them on almost everything, like emotionally, like politically, and in every way, you're just rooting for the for these apes. And it's 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 mm-hmm. in, it's like insane to say out loud because <laughs> Jane Goodall. It's insane. Yeah. I guess Jane Goodall would have said that out they're, loud. They're like Tarzan. they're so silent too. All they do is like they they still do sign language. Yeah. Not all of them still George can of speak the jungle, yet. Like. Yeah. Well, let's talk about where the apes are. So the apes are still evolving and getting smarter. And, and I think they're, they're just realizing there's more and they more of them. They basically have a hideout in in that waterfall that they've been fighting yeah, two years, two years yeah, since the end of been, dawn. They've been basically trapped inside the the jungle you know yeah. they haven't been able and now they're they're closing in and the uh, the soldiers know that they're there yeah. and, and um, that that desperation is throughout the movie like mm-hmm. this just really somber like for both despair for yeah. both sides though yeah. too like yeah. you know because it's like you know the apes aren't a lot like you know they think it's only their tribe and stuff like that but the humans are Sa- the same few. thing is happening because yeah, exactly, the humans because yeah. this is something i was telling um um i went to go watch the movie with lex i was telling lex i was like man it's like I, I was expecting the beginning. And I was like, man, why are the humans so dumb in the Planet of the Apes movies? Um, when you know, w- obviously this virus has killed a ton of them. Yeah, and they leave like, yeah, yeah, it Where, where are these? Where? Yeah, I was like, man, uh, these we primitive just, ones. Like, when yeah. did that happen? But we kind of see that happening um, when we meet the girl who's silent. Yeah, the the simian flu. Talk. The simian flu is like a different strain that's evolved yeah. too, and it started to. Um, in their in the humans' words, take them back to yeah. primitive, you know, their primitive state. So it's that despair that is dr- is driving these soldiers and the colonel. And later on, we learn that the colonel is really just a small faction. Of yeah, exactly. This when and he's the only intense, one who, who, yeah, yeah, he was kind of like he, he's eliminating the virus at all costs, which means kill our own, Even, kill your yeah, kids, humans, kill yep. you know your wife. He your shot husband. his kid, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah he did. Let's why, talk like about the colonel Woody Harrelson. What do you guys <clears> think of him <throat> as the colonel, as like the villain? In this movie, we I well, I wanted more of him. He yeah, was a exactly, very great yeah, villain. That, that's what I said. Is like I think it, hopefully they're like he might delete. He obviously on the Blu-ray they might have some deleted scenes. I'm not saying like a director's cut. Uh oh, like you know of stuff like that. But Reeves, listen ho- up. Yeah, hopefully there open are, invite Reeves. <laughs> hopefully there are deleted scenes with Woody Harrelson because I did want more of him. Yeah, and they didn't show him a lot, which makes sense because I mean. The ape cast is pretty big, I guess, yeah. you know, um, trying to keep track of little Cornelius. But and then you have, you know, you pay attention to Caesar and then the Caesar splits up with Maurice. So now you're following Maurice and Bad Ape. And 
you know, isn't it wild Rocket? that he started as like the dumb bartender in Cheers, and he's like, you know, from True Detective to all of the roles that he's really showing, like Kingpin, some, yeah, some insane <laughs> acting chops. Um, and yeah, I I, just, I liked him; he was a tragic character. Um, yeah, and this so, one definitely like he's like not your average. Like yeah. you really feel for him, especially that scene. There, there's a great scene where they pull him into, I think he pulls Caesar into his office and he's talking to him about. Uh, you know about his game plan and stuff like that. What he, what he plans to do, but yeah, he the explains monologue, the typical villain monologue. Yeah, but yeah. he basically explains like why he um like yeah, you know, why he, he does is. that. Yeah, he is the way he is. Well, and he, that's and where he says he ki- he's killed his son. Yeah, and this and that. And you're just kind of like this guy's crazy, but you can totally tell where he's coming from. Like it, it's just, he it's basically really states weird. that it, they're all acts of war. Like he doesn't take it personally. He it's just a war, and that's what I told John at yeah, the beginning. Is to f- the movie is, the movie starts crazy because like. These soldiers, these human soldiers look at apes and they don't think twice. Like, they're not saying, hey, we're going to take prisoners. Hey, you know, uh, maybe we should talk to them. It's immediately, you know, blow them up. It's like uh, soldiers in Afghanistan or something like that. You don't just go like when you bump into a situation like this, you go all in, you know. So that's the way that's what I thought was crazy about the one of the crazy things about this movie. And it's kind of weird because we see and this is just all part of the decisions, the production design. Um, that the colonel is sort of driven by like this really strong, almost religious um, belief system of like it's us or them. And, you know, it's a very black or white situation. We see uh, like almost scriptures <coughs> written all over the walls where it says this is history or Alpha and Omega. We are the beginning and, and the end. The Alpha and Omega is awesome because in the second Planet of the Apes movies, there are groups of humans um, that follow those yeah. signs, Alpha and Omega, and it kind of gives a lot of that beginning, that ex- explanation, and it's it's really cool, and it's, it's sort of oddly political. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. Sure. Yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Like, it, here's this demagogue, well, and these people are following him, and they're building a wall. I mean, the, these these soldiers <laughs> cheer, <laughs> cheer, a bit, like cheer two him. on the nose. There, the soldiers cheer the colonel, yeah. and he he does the the sign of the cross in front of them. Yeah. you know? and they play the Amer- the national anthem. They yeah. show his cross on his on his chest and he's talking from like a balcony like almost like a like a classic like dictator like like Mussolini yeah Yeah, yeah, Mussolini or something yeah so um, I mean they even play the national anthem while they torture these apes or they they bring them out to work you know so it's kind of like this weird sense of like dang like you're you're oppressing almost like a species you know or you know it sort of was weird because you're talking we're talking about the part where they're um Basically, making the apes do whatever they want in like a you know, like almost like slave labor. Yeah, yeah. But it's insane how dark this movie is. I don't even think it's rated R, right? It's PG thirteen. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's PG thirteen. It is so insane. Like there, are, there are parts where the apes are hanging on like almost crosses on the way and to the camp. That's and it's, an homage to yeah. the old Tangent, ones too, yeah. because it's a, it's they, they Easter eggs. The, yeah, yeah, the scarecrow thing. They're actually they're the they exact same and shape. You can see the foreshadowing between of, like this event is the inspiration for why apes treat humans like this the in the future do, yeah. when Charlton Heston is yeah. here or if that <laughs> ever happens. You, you know, know, it's insane because this is a known franchise that these little things could exist without the friend, like the, the even the like the tiny like Cornelius and exactly all of these little homages Nova, that they're yeah. doing, all these Nova, all those connections. Like if you hadn't told me that, I wouldn't have even known. Like because yeah, it just yeah, fits yeah. so well, and it's not like Jurassic World. <laughs> World like oh, look at this old Jurassic Park. Yeah, Jeep, yeah. Jeep still works. That yeah. still works. That's here yeah, in the backyard. And, and obviously, the the original movies took place in like the future. I think it's like three thousand one hundred. Oh yeah, long, or something. long time. Yeah. And um, so they said that it's not. It might not even be a direct. You know, Planet of the Apes might not even be a direct sequel. Yeah, they found the oasis at the end, and yeah. they're in the desert, and yeah. obviously they see how they treat apes there, so they're going to imprison humans to yeah. do the labor, and they're losing their voices. You know, going back to the primitive stuff and all that jazz. But they said that. You know, it could be to the point where maybe Cornelius is a name that they use in a line mm. of family. So, yeah. like, Cornelius could and be even Caesar and then yeah. Cornelius Caesar. And it's the same thing with Nova. Yeah. Nova will become a name that they'll use for generations, yeah. you know. Because the, uh, the apes aren't 100% evolved yet. It's insane that they can shoot guns. They ride horses, which I yeah. think is bonkers well, insane. And it's it, also that's very, that's a very Planet of the Apes trope. Yeah, like they have to, that's that's the thing that connected. Yeah. Like that's the imagery, like well, apes like even, riding horses and stuff. Even in the original, like they're so advanced to the point where all the apes specifically have their like they're born into a class. Orangutans yeah. are the scientists, and that's, you know the the you have the regular apes who are the the security or the the police yeah. officers. I think know? we're kind of getting at this right now. Should, so, do you guys think that this is literally? Do you guys think that Matt Reeves meant for this to be a connection to the original Planet of the Apes or I think not he really? I it open to the point where, like, if w- they want to make more, they can make it right. 
and they can redo like, hey, they have a guy named Charlton Heston because the the <laughs> you know not Charlton Heston yeah, but yeah, whatever yeah. is what you know they call him Bright Eyes in that one too. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, they because they have the spaceship taken off, didn't they? Uh, yeah, and James they Franco's? did. Yeah, James Franco's. So they, what they if say the spaceship the astronaut just, like you know they lost the spaceship up there? Yeah. So what if the spaceship just came down like? Tw- 10 20 years later yeah. so it's, it doesn't have to be you know a, a millennia yeah. yeah or whatever you know but um or if not if they don't make any more then yeah you can make that connection and so say you it's, it's in a you know it, it it fits in it's a prequel to the original planet of the apes so you think he he made it like open-ended for that for sure that yeah. yeah so that way i meant again i hope he doesn't do any 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 more because i don't i would hate for him to to tarnish anything, you know, if it didn't go so well or because he did it for, mo- you know, only money or whatever. Yeah, it's it is like uh, it, it's enough to connect it, but it's not enough to complete it. Like it's enough to say, well, these could be the seeds of yeah. what happened. But he didn't say, you know, this is exactly yeah what, happens, what it is yeah. like. There's a paradise. And from what we know, there is still like an army out there somewhere in the north. You know, there's a lot of. Still loose ends, but I think this I think this trilogy was all about bringing back to our first point, like I think this is all about Caesar. Yeah. So I think Matt Reeves character driven like for story. Matt Reeves, I think this is where his thing ends because Caesar dies at the end. He's like, This is this ape's um rise to being like the savior he of He was the first great ape, basically. Yeah. And there's probably and many more after him, but like yeah. An insanely great ape. Like yeah. Jesus. Yeah. He's this great ape, bad yeah. ape. Boom. <laughs> I think there's a lot <laughs> to say about the decisions they make in the movie too. Like they're, they didn't, they don't do flashbacks. Like um, it was very easy for them when the colonel was talking about killing his son to flashback to a scene where to he like, kills yeah, his son, where, or he's like, yeah. And instead, they introduce kind of this uh, Koba imagery where he's hallucinating, hallucinating yeah. all the time of becoming his enemy almost. And it, I thought that was really really cool because they also came at times where he's either messed up in the head where he's like gone through something emotional or he's starving. So it's not like he's just crazy and seeing this guy. It's like, you know, his mind's wandering and something like that happens. Um, let's talk about the introduction of a couple of the new characters in this movie. We have got the little girl, Nova, 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 and who, uh, and, uh, um, uh, 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 a really dark introduction to her, right? Like they are, it's like full Western driving through or riding through, through horses and they shoot this guy who's gathering wood, and Nova is inside. He, the guy does pull a gun on him, so it's true. Yeah, it's not, not just a massacre. So the guy yeah. was her father, though, right? Was that tr- so? I didn't get I that know, for be, sure because he could talk. But don't you think if the father would spend enough time yeah. with the girl to the point where she also that means that talk? she was conceived probably after the apes took over, or maybe the guy knew that they were going to kill her. If he stayed there and he took his daughter, yeah, to, and to hide him out in that little no. area, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because I was like, oh, that would have been so. Yeah, yeah see, that's I gotta tell you, Lex thought that's sad. Lex thought he was like molesting her. Oh man, and, yeah. and we're thirty-seven moving seconds, on. Yeah, and moving 37 on. Seven, um, thirty-seven minutes in, <laughs> thirty-seven minutes in. Um, but there is a lot of um, so he, she's a new character. There's also the bad bad ape, the bad other ape. ape that can talk. Um, it's played by Steve Zahn, I think. Steve Zahn oh, cool. was a really cool um, well, it's, actor. It's, it's a really cool streak. kind what? of um, new is thing. Is He's like comedic relief for a lot of the darkness for in the sure. movie. Well, especially because uh, Caesar's the only ape that can talk. So they're like, for sure, he can't be just cracking one-liners. But yeah. let's throw in especially, another ape that can talk. Especially since his family just died. He can't yeah, just yeah, be joking exactly. around. So um, they threw in Bad Ape. And Bad Ape can, can talk, and he can throw in one-liners. Yeah. yeah. I got it wrong. He wasn't in Blue Streak. He was in National Security. Damn. Boom. Who, Steve Zahn? Steve Zahn, yeah, my bad. The Zawa? Devin Zawa? He's also in uh, National uh, Lampoon's Vacation. He's in a lot of things. Yeah, like he's, he's, a, he's, in, yeah. he's in a ton of things. Um, so there's uh, there's Bad Ape. Um, obviously, we talked about Colonel. What did you guys think? I don't know the name of this guy, but you know that one soldier that they released? That they spared, and then he shoots him at the end, that little yeah. bitch. What do you think about him? Because they always lingered on him as if you were supposed to think, like, oh, he's going to save Caesar at yeah, some point. Yeah, I know. And it's sad. They always lingered on him. He was the soldier that takes him to the Colonel th- every time. I think like, that was really cool, though, though, because, like, you know, that's, again, it's like, you know, they... It just goes to show you that there's a line drawn in the sand, and well, they're like, you know, like... There's no exception. Well, right? even, too, even the, like, the big ape, too, where he's like, hey, I'm going to be a donkey and, like, serve them, and I work with Cobra, oh. and I hated Caesar. It's the same thing with him, where he's like, hey, 
There's a line that yeah. you, you you just can't you, you can't go through. I you get know, with I get that part too. I think a little bit even more simpler than that is just like this movie just really wanted to subvert your expectations of everything. Like you know, it's like what you guys said earlier. There wasn't even a big fight between the colonel and Caesar at the very end of the movie. Like you know, it's just every time you think something's gonna happen, it really doesn't. Yeah. Well, let's talk about one of the main um, betrayals in the movie. The reason why his family Winter, died. Winter. That little bitch. Because Winter. that albino Winter was monkey. coming. And you knew it. Gosh. Winter and was you coming so and you it. left. Winter yeah. came a lot of times. Winter came real hard. And then. Winter just came and left. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it was snowing. Winter was there. Yeah. It um, came very quickly. Okay. All right. Enough about Gorilla Come. Came and coming. And comings and goings. Came. Winter, I thought it was a cool storyline. Like, it seemed to me like because of this desperation and this fear that a lot of these apes, just as complex as we are, are like making these crazy decisions that and I'm going to be looking out for number one and oh. not just for the yeah. whole race. Yeah, and that's you know? crazy. What do you get? It was only gorillas who turned, right? No, there like, were some chimps, okay. like you know, some Koba? chimp ones there. Yeah, like that's true. Uh, basically, all of Koba's followers, like well, all the people who I didn't even know Koba had that many. I guess I got to go back and watch Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. I didn't know that Koba had that many people. Yeah. underneath his wing. But it whenever they were all captured Flying and monkey. working, we all saw like chimpanzees and and um. Uh, orangutans captured. Remember that old orangutan that gets like that's shot. a classic. That's he gets a, shot up. That's a scene from Ben Hur. When he wherever an older um, up. this old guy was, was Ben Hur stands up and he's like, "Hey, don't hurt him" or something like that. Like this is all a bunch of movies, and it's actually Matt Reeves and a couple other people who are helping him write. They just watched they watched a shit ton of movies. Uh, right? Yeah, and that's like, really in awesome a, in a theater. Which he is said badass. that. Yeah, he said that that's that normally what First screenwriters problems. say that they want to do and they never do do. He's like, they actually do do. Yeah, they never do do it. But yeah, him and the, um, that's where they, where you talked about some of the movies earlier, The Bridge of the River Kauai and, yeah. you know, The Outlaw. Apocalypse Dizzy Now. Wills. Apocalypse Now. Yeah, they watched like all these movies just Planet to try and get age, like the a, original. Just to try and get some inspiration. And I think that's great. That's an awesome process. Like, Julius you know, Caesar. Because there I'm are, I think what's one of the faults is if you t- kind of tailor your movie towards one movie. People will automatically think, "Oh, this is derived, or this is you know, this yeah. is a remake of this other movie." But if you pull from, but if you pull lots, from like a hundred movies, like then you're Tarantino, an actual filmmaker. Like Tarantino yeah. does all the time. Yeah. You're set. You're great at this, you know. And he, I mean, this movie just that, it full did of good it did stuff. feel like that for sure. Like throughout multiple points in the movie, I couldn't tell you which movie it, it, they were a reference from, but yeah. I knew it was from a movie. Yeah, and it hit that same emotional beat that you you felt when you watched like the the, the, the original old westerns yeah. or whatever mm-hmm. um, that you see. Um, what did you guys think about this uh, northern army? So w- w- one of the twists in the movies is you think that the colonel is being joined by a bunch of troops from the northern force. And they're going to make an extermination. Out, uh, yeah, and they're all going to attack Aves. But you find out that the troops in the northern uh, uh, region region I- are coming the north down and the south. to end... Um, Basically, to end the south. Yeah. <laughs> to end the south. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's a, exa- it's a civil the, war. Again. The south is trying to rise again. And so they're building a wall. They're literally building a wall. Boom. Shoddy security, by the way, because that girl just walked. Nobody just walked in. Yeah. <laughs> and but, but and the was, apes just walked in. There were searchlights, right? Weren't there, there, lights, right? When there, there were, like spotlights? There, there was, was a person, lights. though. There were patrolmen. Not only that. The chimpanzees is all escaped, <laughs> and there's n- no one. They killed. No one the, noticed. They killed the one person who but, was. And that's why I love the title "War for the Planet of the Apes" because it's not even between the apes and the people. It's between the people and the people. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and that, that surprising, was surprising, right? Part of that lure of the original Planet of the Apes was why is the Earth like this? And it was that humans destroyed themselves through nuclear war. And I thought that there would be. I thought there would be a scene where like a million apes were fighting humans. Exactly. Yeah. Humans. yeah, yeah. Not so. Uh-uh. Not so. Just Lots humans, of humans fighting, fighting humans. humans. Yeah, and exactly. the apes just. W- and it kind of fits because the apes ultimately just want to live. Yeah. Give us the forest. Don't attack well, and us. And they wanted peace, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And you're right. If if there was a big battle, then the apes. Probably would have lost. Yeah, like the apes either like would have lost or they won. And then you're like, well, these aren't peaceful apes anymore. Apes anymore. Yeah. You would have changed your mind about them quickly. So it's I mean, brilliant to have just humans fighting I mean, each other and the apes are just like. I guess that's true. It's like the opposite. Apes are enslaved. So you feel more for them <laughs> at the end than yeah, you would. Yeah, and that's part of what I told John I liked about this movie, too, was that in the second one, um, when they had the real war scene between the, the apes and the humans, um, it seemed like everybody was like gorillas and like overpowering yeah, the humans easily yeah. and stuff. And this one, you get them at such a disadvantage that you feel even that much more yeah, for them. Uh, in, even in the end, the the it, that insane kind of uh, Miyazaki thing where there's a million soldiers in white 
and there's one. It looked egg, like like hot, right? And everyone like turns. It um, is like a Miyazaki thing, right? Before, oh, yeah, damn, before awesome. an avalanche, you know, comes and wipes everyone out. And guess what? Apes can climb trees, idiots. Yeah, yeah. Um, avalanches can't <laughs> hurt trees. We all know that. <laughs> but it, it's crazy, like the just the 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 the, the whole movie. Apes a- together strong. Apes together strong. God, it was so cool. Like the, just I just wanted even, to be an ape. Yeah, even when they did that, everyone was like, "Man, when when um, what was the name of his friend who?" Uh, Rocket. Luka. Rocket. 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 One of the only. The Rocket few, Raccoon. The few that survive. And I kind of <laughs> got the feeling that the other ape was going to die. Luca was so sad because he just had that touching moment with Nova where he's like, let me pick this flower. And they knew it too. That's when they I knew it was going to hit uh, you so hard. That's when I was like, oh man. that's a-. And I, honestly, I thought Bad Ape was going to die too because he had that kind of moment when he's like, oh, I'm going to help you guys. And I was like, oh, he's dead. Instead, yeah. they're just Everyone's like Luca. dead. Yeah, just Luca. Luca Brazzi from uh, so, The Godfather. But man, that Luca Bring death was so insane. The, um, the uh, family dead. Yeah, and, and, and everything serves God. a purpose because initially um, uh, Caesar does not want Nova around. He's like, all humans are you know crazy. Yeah. But Nova and... Uh, um, she feeds him and gives him water. She when basically teaches prison. him his humanity again. And then like he has Yeah, he's like, oh, there so are yeah. still good people yeah. still. You know, look and at it, you. And it she, aims to work when he ultimately can kill the colonel. Yeah, and he does it. And doesn't. he's like, I'm so much bigger. Yeah. And oh. it's, it's the same thing when he lets the hostages go, where yeah. he's like, hey, you think they'll give them the message? And he's like, no, they are the message. Yeah. Like, you, you, we're not savages. And it's the same thing where, like, you you could easily kick this guy while he's down, but he's he going to be the bigger person, walks away. And and how dark was that? He just kills and he's himself. Like, yeah, and he's like, I'm going to watch you do it, though. Like, oh, yeah. this, is, this is all your choice, but I'm going to watch it because you killed my family. That was a crazy decision, too. Like, he was like, you know what? I'll let you do it, but I'm, like, not going <laughs> to. Yeah, I'm not going to turn away, though. Yeah. Oh, it's Where so the popcorn yeah, it's so at? Like the, Where the bananas? Just the amount of hate. and, and he ba- uh, I'm pretty well, sure the colonel tried to beat himself to death the night before because he turned around when he was drinking, and, like, he had a bloody nose. Well, that, they and, like, all had bloody like, noses. They all came out of Before they become mute, right? Oh, really? Yeah. Even the little girl had a bloody nose. Yeah, but he did do some heavy drinking, though. His canteen was there. Oh, he Yeah, he's still trying to reach the bottle. whiskey bottle <laughs> yeah but yeah, um, god even that was really cool it was really really sad yeah like, it's just like it's you, not what you expect about the villain of the movie you're just like you're feeling for him right before i was telling john that all the villains kill themselves almost yeah or all the like the main the main actors in all these movies james franco killed himself for creating this apes yeah plague uh <laughs> Um, who's that? Uh, Gary Oldman uh, blows, blows himself, himself up. up yeah. uh, Rudy Harrelson shoots himself in the face. Yeah, man, it's it's crazy how like tense this movie get. Like the throughout the movie for Caesar, you just ultimately felt so much. Not just compassion, but like man, I don't know you what were, happened to the dude from the second one? Why didn't he show up to help? I don't know. He's not he, soldiers. He, huh? I mean, he's not a soldier. You That's can't all right. Help. But what were you saying? Sorry, like, I yeah. forgot. Honestly, oh, okay. we're I good. forgot. Yeah, I think, sorry. I think that means it wasn't important. Um, <laughs> let's see. What else uh, do you guys want to talk about for War of the Planet? It's really f- f- fantastic. Real bummer that Caesar died at the end. I will say, um, I like, and it's almost like <sighs> a Disney movie too, like like the, or like something like uh, I guess real kid appropriate too. You yeah, know? like dies and it's like this big land that he fought for yeah. and oh. all his race. How awesome was the last shot towards the sky as like a hey, like the space? Yes, yeah, being a is that what like I? That's I what so I too. felt. I, I was like, there man. was going to be a shooting star or something mm-hmm. like an astronaut something landing like, you know, right yeah, away. I know. Yeah. I literally yeah. thought started that the sequel. Layers, so layers. easy, <laughs> like to do. Um, I want to do. I want to say something about Michael Michael Gaiacchino's score. Yeah. in this movie, great, fantastic. Yeah, amazing score. That's what par- partially what made me think of a western. Also, is like a uh, like that uh, was very like hateful eight ish. Uh, well, it was like very heavy like. I feel like, like it was heavy brass, yeah. But like, like those, that's very reminiscent of the original. War. That's the original re- re- reminiscent of the original uh, Planet of the Apes, though. That's yeah. what I thought. Like it was. We have cool. the score on vinyl, original Planet of the Apes. Ooh, baby! But uh, I love the score, especially the my favorite part was the actual main theme of the of this movie, and I guess of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. It was playing uh, as Caesar dies at the very end, when he's talking to Maurice. Mm, yeah. Such a great scene. And just like that music just made it that much more powerful. I just yeah. thought it was pretty awesome. Poor little baby Cornelius, orphaned. Again. He's, He's going to be a, a, a monkey Batman. He's going to meet Zira, who's his Shira? wife. Shira? Maybe. From Masters from of the, the original universe. Planet of the Apes. Yeah. How in yeah. Oh, man. And then there's, they're on human sides in the original Planet of the Apes, but for some reason Nova's trapped. Mm. So I'm saying, like, you know, it's probably a name like that was she passed was down. Or cool with, with apes. Because I guess that makes sense. You said earlier, like, you know, they, they could have shown the apes being savage and, like, you know, showing that. They kind of are, like, the original flick. Like, yeah. Which is kind of weird. Yeah. I love how, like, the reverse, how rever- reversed it is. But, like, they are very, very brutal in the original movie. Like, yeah. 
They take over the Golden they, they Gate want, Bridge, yeah, and they, it's like they're insane. To, yeah. Oh, I was like, no, 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 no. I'm talking about like in the, the original. original like they, the, oh, I see what you're yeah, they're yeah. trying to castrate people, and yeah. Doctor Zay is like, hey, if you don't tell they me what I need people's to know, brains. Oh, I like they, yeah, they, yeah they it's do like lobotomies. it's like yeah. cyclical, right? Like it's um, human savages, then it's gonna be the apes, and then yeah, it's gonna yeah. be humans again, and yeah, then exactly. it's the apes. Like it's it's pretty insane. It's like we're always having a battle for the planet. It's almost like if humanity comes to you, then like you know, it's gonna Cornelius orphan like Batman. Uh, Batman's his next movie. Boom. Boom. Connection made. Connection made, baby. Same universe. Yeah, exactly. I know. Same universe, guys. He's gonna throw up the bone, and it's gonna be the scene from 2001: A Space Odyssey. (laughs) Wrong ape movie. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Another thing I'll say I really liked about this movie (laughs) is uh, because I, I I don't know if it's because maybe we weren't paying attention, but there isn't a lot of uh, like I don't want to even say spoilers, but like watching the trailers and listening to people talk about it before this movie came out, before I watched it, you, you still don't know what's going to happen. You still didn't know, yeah. and it was just so much different than so much more different than what you would what you expect, and so much more better. Yeah, more better. Oh, double negative. Am I right? More better. Yeah, and uh, people positive, are really like it. liking it. Um, uh, critics are giving it uh, a, a really high grade. Um, calling it probably like one of the best trilogies of all time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The box office is doing really well, which I'm very happy for. For it this beat movie. Spider-Man. Wow. Yeah, I mean, which is not hard, not not easy to do. I mean, you <laughs> don't really think of like the War, the Planet of the Apes movies as being like box office. Or yeah, you do. Never mind. You do, yeah, They're the original bit. like box office like. But people definitely got fatigued like at a certain point. Like Tim Burton's. Yeah, like, about, that one. Yeah, Planet of the Apes Mark did Wahlberg not do did well. Come down. Let's talk about the. Um, uh, do you guys think this? I think this movie wins an Oscar. I really do. Special effects? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Effects, hopefully. If, it, needs if to. it doesn't, then I, then, uh, I hope Suicide rigged. Squad wins. <laughs> okay, all right. No. I this wouldn't be opposed to, like, a best actor. No, I mean, I know it's, it's, I it's you, wishful just thinking. Just a nomination. Yeah. But I, a I nomination for, he for should Circus, win. like, no doubt. But like, he needs a nomination for sure. Yeah. Um, I, 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 it would be a big statement, I think, if Circus gets nominated for an Oscar because actors are totally against... CG yeah, stuff. stuff like that. Because yeah. technically, do you really need actors if people care more about a character? I don't know. I mean, but like that what what made uh, you I don't know. What made you care about that character? John, we don't know. What made you care about Andy Serkis? Th- yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um, so out of these three modern Planet of the Apes movies, yeah. where do you rank this one? Go ahead. From three to one, one being the best, three being the worst. Go ahead. I will say I liked it. I I I have a a kind of a penchant towards westerns. Like I love westerns. Like I I just think there's something really cool about these people who are driven by a very emotional thing, and everything they do just happens to affect like the entire planet or you know a, a whole town. Just the environment or around them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's such a it's such a cool um thing to, what well, I, I don't know how to word this. I was gonna say to. Have your entire family taken away, but it's it's <laughs> there's something really people love Clint Eastwood in his movies where he's a badass because he's free of giving a fuck. You know, it's kind of similar to he's battle. Motiv- yeah, he's motivated by a very very like, simple. It's, either, like, yeah, know, it's, focus. Sir, it's simple like, to understand. There's vengeance, very simple, simple motive, yeah. or it's and, and and it's like I don't care if I die, really. Like I really don't. You yeah, know? And, and at some point Caesar decides, well, I actually that, lead people. That hero with nothing to lose, nothing to lose, baby. And that's why I think this was is number nothing one for me. And I think it's a two and then one. One I think I liked because of how much plot was happening. And yeah, the first one was very heavy on plot. And you're you like, got Draco Malfoy. Well, yeah, there's Get your hands off me, you damn still, dirty ape. They still, got that one out of the way Still quick. very personal. Still fucking tragic as shit when they're abusing him. Yeah. And James Franco loses Boom, him. Cobra. Cobra dies. Yeah. Oh, Second no, one, meant. still pretty tragic, too. Like, all these movies are, are like, tragedies. Are really, yeah, really bad. Like, but I, know, not I bad, st- but, like, just, like... Yeah, some sad three, undertones. Yeah. yeah, I count down three, two, one. Because there's just... Yeah, I like this one most. I'm going to go ahead and say this... Oh shit! I don't know. I know. I need to watch the second one. Yeah, yeah just you're right. To make sure one and two is kind of are kind of. But I think so. Right now, it's three, two, one. Also, yeah, same here. I was, just I was be- like, just because this one, yeah. Well, like, and I meant like I was telling John. I said your most recent movie is obviously what you've been working for your entire life. It's yeah. supposed to be all this progress that you made until now. Yeah. So it should be that step in the right direction where like people can point out to where. Uh, oh, he was inspired from this, and you know, and he was inspired from that, and you know, he, he took this from this story because that's all I guess filmmaking is. Yeah, he, you know, that's why Quentin Tarantino was so good at it because he watches anything and everything he can get his hands on. Yeah, now Matt Reeves does too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and um, I think that's what you see with this one, and I think that's what makes this a little bit ahead of the second one is because obviously when he directed the second one, he was younger and he yeah. was that much more, you know, 
uh, and the, behind. The first one was so close to a normal blockbuster movie because it was about apes coming smart and taking over like San Francisco. Like it's a very you can get why very simple like you yeah. Know. So it was it didn't. I mean, I'm it happy the, it was, it was a Matt scene. Reeves. Yeah. I'm happy it was a Matt Reeves movie, yeah. but technically it was like a uh, like you know this movie's already going to make money I and mean, it's always it's already going to be interesting. And he just added a lot of um, great style and, de- and like decision making ultimately to make it even better mm-hmm. because you actually cared about the main character. The second was him kind of veering more towards Caesar, I think, because Caesar became a leader almost, like almost a reluctant leader kind of, but because he had to face Koba. Right for the, and that's for the like, throne. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're deciding like what is the right path for apes to take. And this movie is Caesar AF. Where it's literally just like a, just a journey that he takes, and people show up, people leave, you you meet people, they go, you know, and, and it's but it's all about his literal journey to you know the little town, and also like a very the little oasis, yeah, like spiritual journey, yeah, like this one. I feel like this movie has, I don't know, does this movie? To me, it has less plot than the other two, but there's just a lot more character, more, yeah. More character moments and just like very strong and powerful, like you know, just scenes in general, yeah. like than the other ones. Because not much has happened. Humans are dying. Apes are still there, trying to survive. Yeah, and, that's, and it's a, it's a revenge it. story from A to B. Yeah, and he gets to B, but like you know, you figure out yeah. what happens after that, and, and it's just you didn't need to advance it as much. Like the other ones had to advance, like the the virus. They had to advance, you know, yeah, all these other explanations. And this one, you kind of already get that. And this is like the you last know where it's going this to is the last chapter. Yeah. And so you're like, oh man, I. I think you, it ends. you guys are right. Is that it? This one is probably the smallest scale, um, in re- yeah. regarding to the I guess the the uh, the world yeah. events. Sort know? of literally the beginning and the end. There's probably not more than ten apes and or yeah. ten characters in the same. This on the one screen. is yeah. definitely yeah. more personal for for Caesar or whatever. But um, I meant the first one. It's like the takeover, and it's yeah. the whole species taking on the other species. It's crazy. The second it's, one it's is the wild. war between yeah. both of them, and this one is kind of like, hey, this is the ending to my story. Yeah, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, what a life Caesar Great has movie. had, huh? Yep. And uh, yeah. R- R.I.P. We uh, will miss you, Caesar. One of the one of the best heroes in I think cinematic oh, uh, yeah. recent history. Like an actual hero, not like yeah. I saved the planet hero, but just a hero in just generally that yeah. you rooted for. Yeah. Every time, and he had no advantage. Like he's not stronger than anyone. He was literally, literally he was the underdog. From the bottom yeah. He was the cage. underdog in every yeah. movie. Every movie. He, he was, was bullied by all the other chimpanzees when he went to the the animal that shelter, zoo, yeah. remember? And like he God. Yeah. Oh, Caesar. Oh. Yeah, his first fight was with Rocket. I'm going to name my son Caesar. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cesar. 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 Yeah, uh, Cesar Chavez. Chavez. <laughs> Revolutionary also. Caesar Chavez. Um, but yeah, guys. Any? What are your final thoughts of this film? I guess we had a ton of final thoughts. But, yeah, I guess uh, that whole over there. Yeah. And then we'll talk about the sequel. Oh boy, to this uh, movie. Um, well, yeah. final um, thoughts. Yeah, final thoughts. I mean, I don't really have much to add. I kind of gushed over it the entire uh, podcast. Um, yeah, it's a great movie. A uh, great ending to it to this trilogy. Probably one of the best uh, third movies of all time. You know, you don't, it's hard to find good uh, number threes, and this is great. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's pr- it's better than the second one. Like just me saying that, and so it, go see it. It advances. It gets better. Yeah, advances. Yeah, rare. this is one of the weirdest ones where like, every movie gets better. And so, like you know, um, yeah, go see it. It's amazing. I normally wouldn't want to stay on it for a franchise after it's like you know gone, but this one was just so good that I, I'm excited to see what they have next. Yeah, Andrew. Yes, that is me. Um, yeah, I I think uh, we we covered we kind of covered it all, and um, I did appreciate how fresh they they still kept this one, making the apes the underdog, and kind of giving us something new. And um, I met the cast was awesome: Woody Harrelson, the little girl who played Nova, all the motion capture with Andy Serkis, and the other apes. You can, uh, um, I think it's this is th- this franchise is gonna I think benefit the uh, cinema altogether, both in um production value with the cgi and stuff like that but also i think to uh to setting the example of a of a a blockbuster that can still be i guess um uh, that can still become a classic and still have meaning you know not a lot of people approach a movie that way i mean you guys we did transformers and there was you know it was just robots kind of smashing robots but in this one there's so much more going on underneath the skin uh or more than meets the eye but yeah. another transformer uh pun more that meets the fur am i right 
Got, it, speaking of that, Transformers cost a hundred million dollars more than this movie. Jesus Christ! And, and it's not even one eighth of this movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like an hour longer than this movie yeah. too. But I agree. Oh, yeah. Like this, this movie had great acting, great directing. It had insane special effects. The, everything came together like visually and the cinematography, and it's also super complex. Like it's a complex movie that is oddly really really simple because it it you know who to root for it's really just like the decision because i could see you watching this movie and rooting for caesar to kill the colonel and also rooting for him to like spare his life right like you could you you it's it's weird but you were voting for like the gray area um in the movie a lot it's, it's in, yeah. It's uh, I think uh, I think like people don't realize how special this movie is right now, but they'll look back in the future on this trilogy yeah. and they'll see how underrated it is. And I don't know if it's gonna keep the box office with Dunkirk coming out this week. Yeah, Dunkirk. But um, but go see it, guys. Please, like yeah, don't, for don't sure. Overlook it. Yeah, and I mean, like, and this is one of those movies that will inspire a generation to pick up the old ones. Yeah, you know where people who uh, they this is all the Planet of the Apes that they know, and they'll tell you, wait, wait, like there's more to the story. Like man, yeah. I I'll totally go watch that one because of this it's such um, a complete like thing like it's it's insane yeah. to see this and there isn't like a an after credit scene of like caesar being like oh i'm still alive yeah, like it's so complete or like and the satisfying and uh, yeah. earth. Like, and it would have been too easy for that there's a lot of things that that uh, obviously people want to keep going because they're like oh it did well at the box office we're gonna str- we're gonna ride this tr- you know and they're this. supposedly planning a fourth yeah i know and and beat this horse until it's dead you know type of thing which it's uh, I would hate for that to happen, you know, till the wheels fall off. But there are uh, things like, uh, you know, uh, for those of you, I guess, like that's all like Breaking Bad or things like that, that call it and say, hey, this is the ending of the story and that's it. You know, and that's why I would hope that they did this with the what, you know, th- at least don't make it about Caesar. Caesar yeah. yeah. Or don't make it about, you know, Cornelius right after Caesar or, or you know, make it about another ape on the other side yeah. of the world or because they said it's happening all over the planet. Yeah. If there's a conflict or like the last human trying to stay like intelligent yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So keep it fresh in this because it, it, it is a world that they built. And I think that's what partially what makes it so successful is that he immersed himself in this. You know, and some people half ass it and it doesn't work as well. But he was able to cre- successfully create this you know, different world that you yeah. can step into and, you know, and understand. Breaks the, yeah. And it's like, you it's like the walking dead, but with apes, yeah. you know, kind, kind of way. So every time you, you're able to immerse yourself into a show like the walking dead or something like that, that's the way this is. with like Lord of the Rings. We're like, Oh my God, I'm in this universe, Harry Potter. And it's the same thing with Matt Reeves. He was able to stay true to that old, um, I guess, planet of the apes mythos. Yeah. It, it's really it, it still gives you that, that moment of when Charleston Heston saw the New York, the P- statue of Liberty. It it stretches that feeling out throughout this whole three movies almost. Yeah, definitely, and it does make you appreciate, like you said, like all of the older ones, and because there you just were dropped into a planet, and they gave so much context yeah, and to then everything. That movie was short too; it was like yeah. an hour or something. So yeah. you were like, "Man, I want more." Yeah, and even with these three movies going by, I still want more, which is crazy. Yeah, I should be, I guess, like you know, tired out of it or something yeah. like that. But but really, really, really fantastic reboot and a uh, really great sequel. We say recommend go to the movies, guys. Watch this movie. It's two it's worth thumbs it. up. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs. three uh, out of three jalapenos. Mm. Uh, five stars. Whoa. Two stars out of one star, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, two thumbs up your butt. That's, cool. what's, that's what's being plugged. Guys, this is episode 96. Ooh. Four more. Four more. Yeah, Four we more. Have, we have something excited planned for the 100. We don't know yeah. what it is yet, but if, if you have any ideas. I don't know what the mo- next movie the we're watching The Ten Commandments. Is. We're doing it. Valerian? Dunkirk? Oh, Valerian. Valerian. The, Fallopian? Valerian, the sequel, too. Valerio? I don't know. 102 Dalmatians. Ooh. The live, the live action one. Ooh, because it's Ooh. 100. Uh, oh. Oh. We, can, oh. we should yeah, do sure. that for the 102nd episode. Oh, my God. That'd be the worst. But, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I am down for Isn't the 102nd Glenn yeah. Close? Yeah. Glenn Isn't Close. she Curl yeah, DeVille? Yeah, she's DeVille. So she must have, done, this must have been great, right? Yeah, Devil Wars Prada yeah. is, is a prequel to that. It shows you how Cruella DeVille got into the fashion business. <sighs> what the fuck? It's Meryl Streep. God. Oh, yeah, is it? <laughs> Oh my god! Um, do, no, you guys have, do you guys have anything to plug? Close. Yeah, yes. Barrow Street. No, is is the oh, is it, oh yeah, they look similar. That's terrible. Yeah, I know. Um, do you guys have anything to plug? 
Um, yeah. Um, what uh, Planet of the Apes? Oh, so they always have uh, spinoffs <laughs> at these comic book stores, and um, head down to Heroes and Fantasies. They have a whole bunch of different uh, Planet of the Apes titles. Planet of the Apes crosses over with Green Lantern. Pl- crosses over with uh, Star Trek. You get some apes that have Green Lantern rings. Um, they're also a part of Starfleet. Gets real crazy, real hood. Marvel, uh, Marvel apes. Yeah, yeah, exa- yeah, exactly. <laughs> Planet of the Marvel apes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't um, listen to all the um, Duff and Pod stuff. Go to Revenge of the Sequel dot com uh, watch again. The videos. Yeah, watch the videos. Watch the videos. Read the reviews. Read the reviews. Read the reviews. Watch the videos. Send us reviews if you want a review. Send us r- uh, videos and uh, uh, <laughs> some pictures, maybe. <laughs> yeah, the nudes. Send us nudes. Yeah, if send, us re- to you, send us reviews yeah. first, and then we'll ask for the nudes. Yeah. But um, yeah, uh, do all that stuff. Uh, listen to the Sticker Fridge we'll Network. We'll even po- review your nudes. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to the Sticker Fridge stuff, uh, um, Fan Films, um, Movie Club Podcast, Director Showdown. Season 2 will begin pretty soon. Um, yeah. And then just keep being fucking awesome. Guys, We uh, the shirts, I think, got sent today for everyone who bought one. Thank you so much for supporting the pod. Yeah, and there you go. There's never been a time where you can get this much Revenge of the Sequel. You can get it. On uh, RevengeOfTheSequel.com. Any way you want it, that's, that's the, the way, way you'll you need it. it. Yeah, and also, you'll get it. You'll get it. Even you'll if, get it any way you want it. Even if you don't want it, we'll Cosby you. Yeah. Um, okay, all right. Maybe another cut. Nah, keep it. Um, yeah, keep that one. You can also get it on the Apple News app, where one of the few movie news um, uh, channels that are on the Apple News app for all you Apple people. Boom. Make it part of your widgets. Make it part of your widgets. Boom. Boom. You didn't think I knew that word, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. Widgets. <laughs> you can search for us. Really? Some, if you, if they you have type widget in, spinners. If you type in revenge on <laughs> Apple News, we're the first thing to come up. If you type in sequels, we're the first thing to come up. If you type in fake news, CNN is the first thing to come up. So I'm you can't get away from <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah. Um, but let's see. Follow us on Facebook and subscribe to the podcast, guys. Twitter, Instagram, Friendster, Snapchat, Grinder, uh, Tinder. And we know a lot uh, of you guys aren't. I know a lot of you guys aren't in the United States. Actually, a surprising amount of you. So, uh, Andrew is now going to say hi to you in all of your native languages. Here, Here we, we go. go. Is, this is a oh, f- no. really offensive. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Never mind. Continue to listen to us. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time. Go watch Doctor Who.